Hello, <laughs> how are you? I have my tea. Yes, I was just gonna what ask you. Have? you. I yes. am having, this is my beautiful boyfriend's <laughs> rainbow mug. And I am drinking Lovely. Sprite from the corner store. Well, I'm drinking coffee, so, you know. Okay. But we'll just say it's tea, I'm ha we're having tea. Well, first things first, congratulations. Oh my God, another amazing year for you. Congratulations you. on your Emmy nomination. How do you feel? You know, it feels great. I mean, it's a really interesting time to be in the middle of what we as America and thereby the world are going through. Mm -hmm. Right now, this pandemic and everything that we're going through right now, it's, it's, it's very difficult to, um, feel joy in the middle of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and so I am working very hard to allow myself to feel the joy. Is there any, any scene from a behind the scenes perspective that stands out to you while filming season two? Oh God. Yeah, that <laughs> love scene. Oh, okay, that okay. That love scene. Well, you have to understand that's the first. Absolutely. That's the oh first my gosh. For me. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't talk about this often. You know, but I am a black gay out leading man. That's a Absolutely. new archetype. This industry and this world, when they felt comfortable seeing us, cut our dicks off. Absolutely. Especially black men. You know, and so with that said, as a black gay out actor, the first time I had any romantic anything was that kiss that I had on the last episode of season one. That was the first time I kissed anyone romantically in anything in my 30 plus year career. It's the first time. Wow. You know, so wow. a love scene? You know, I grew up in the Philippines in an mm -hmm. all boys Jesuit school forum. 12 years, 16 years of my life, and all of the yeah. things that came out in Pose, those are things that I never learned in school. And right. so watching Pose was also a historical sort of education for me. And, you know, I'm only in my mid-20s am I learning a lot of things that I should have learned back then in my childhood. Yeah, should have, would have, could have. That's not, don't worry about that. Just fo focus and lean into what you are learning now. It doesn't matter when you learn it. Just learn it. Absolutely. You know, Maya Angelou says, when we know better, we do better. Like, you can't, you can't, you could never have, you, that's what you were born into. You were born into that life. You now have made the choice to expand. And that's what we're trying to get the rest of the world to do. I have a question for you. And you know, a lot of young filmmakers and young artists are going to be watching this. A lot of them also from, you know, are at the intersection of certain communities and certain minorities. What message do you have for people who are fighting to get recognized, especially when they're coming from these certain communities? The work, the work, the work. George C. Wolf, one of my mentors said to me, Never wait for anybody to give you permission to practice your art. Absolutely. You must be practicing it all the time, even when no one's listening. And most of the time, no one's listening. So what are we doing it for? We're artists first. Do your art. Because when the time comes, you'll be ready. You know, my Aunt Dorothy said, stay ready, then you don't have to get ready. Mm-hmm. And what you're seeing right now, you know, what you've seen from me in the last three years is a person that has stayed ready for decades. I know what for I'm doing. For decades. For decades. I've been getting ready for decades. You know, so none of what's going on is a surprise to me. None of what's happening to me is a surprise or 
you know, I, makes me out of sorts in any way. <laughs> I've been paying attention. I am 50 years old. I've been in this business for 30 plus years. I am ready. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I would say to all of those people. When I started out in this business, you know, you know, there's a there's a conversation going on right now um, that I have to remind folks of, which is I may be cis gendered, but I'm a black gay man. The door has been closed to me until five minutes ago. And the reason why the door opened was I and my generation kicked it down. Yes. We kicked it down. We stood on the shoulders of the people who came behind us and kicked the fucking door down, right? And it's not lost on me that the generations and generations of people who are trailblazers, who represent something new, who kick doors down, who blaze trails, do not always get to reap the benefits of their work. Mm -hmm. I am getting to do both. That takes my breath away. It just takes my breath away. You know, I never imagined when I came into this business, you know, when I was, uh, you know, when I came to New York for the first time in 1987, that it would look like pray tell. I spent the majority of my life trying to be masculine enough so I could eat. Mm -hmm. Everybody told me who I am is, is my liability. And it was for decades. And then it wasn't. Do the work, do the work, do the work.